health and leader of his party. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to speak to this motion um, because, once again, it illustrates the fact that we are uh, at the mercy of government in terms of the decision-making uh, of, of, uh, of when this House sits. Without a calendar, Mr. Speaker, without a calendar to work from that ensures that a uh, parliamentary calendar that is normal in most legislatures and in the, in the House of Commons to ensure that we know when we're here, when we're, how long we're going to be here, when we are going to resume. Uh, these are key things to enable the public, the citizens of the province, to understand when we're working and what we're working at in the Legislative Assembly. We've only been sitting, Mr. Speaker, for two weeks uh, uh, plus a day since, uh, the Christmas, uh, since Christmas, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that the members of the city, citizens of this province uh, want to see us in this House doing our work bringing forward uh, important proposals for solving issues that matter to New Brunswickers, dealing with challenges that, that are of grave concern, debating those proposals, bringing forward private members' business, uh, and holding the government accountable. There are a series of bills, Mr. Speaker, private members' bills that are waiting to be dealt with at, at, uh, uh, at second reading and opposition day. And of course, the opposition days are only occurring only occur Thursday afternoons, Mr. Speaker, and so the fewer days we sit, the fewer Thursday af afternoons there are, and the uh, and fewer opportunities for, for private members' business to move forward, Mr. Speaker, whether it's uh, private members' bills or uh, debatable motions, and that's not very democratic the way I look at it, Mr. Speaker. We need a proper calendar that uh, ensures there are uh, a reasonable number of days that this Legislative Assembly sits. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we went from a, an average of 60 days, sitting days a year, uh, for uh, year after year after year after year, uh, up until the second year of the uh, of the uh, government under uh, Brian Gallant. And since that time, we've been averaging more like 30 days, so it got cut in half. So really, for the last number of years, we've only been sitting half the routine number of days that uh, traditionally this House has sat. Mr. Speaker, and that's a disservice, a disservice to the people of this province. We need a calendar. We need a calendar now. We need a commitment from the government to bring forward a calendar. Uh, that uh, a calendar was moved um, back in 2014, I, I recall, but never brought to the floor for debate. So this has been a long-standing issue, a long-standing need, and uh, it seems to me, Mr. Speaker, that adjourning um, without. Uh, uh, an actual calendar, not just the weeks that the government says they're intending to bring us back uh, to Legislative Assembly to deal with their business, Mr. Speaker, but this business of this House is, is the business of the people, uh, and that's what we're here to work on, Mr. Speaker, and, and when we are limited so severely, I mean, two weeks plus a day since, two weeks plus a day since Christmas is unacceptable, Mr. Speaker, uh, for the sitting of this Legislative Assembly. And uh, that's got to change. If we had a calendar that was debated on the floor of this Legislative Assembly, that we could come to some agreement on the number of days we would routinely sit and when they were uh, over the course of a year, Mr. Speaker, that would represent a huge step forward for the working of this Legislative Assembly. And uh, we should not continue any longer without a parliamentary calendar. We don't have to start from scratch. We don't have to invent, reinvent the wheel here. There are good examples in the House of Commons and many of the provincial legislative assemblies across this uh, country which, from which we can adopt uh, a calendar and how to d develop it and how to implement it, Mr. Speaker. So here we are, after two weeks and a day, uh, once again planning to adjourn the legislative assembly um, when the people's business in no way has been completed where the, what's sitting on the agenda in terms of debatable motions and private members' bills, we haven't got anywhere near uh, dealing with those. Uh, we're having essentially this one opposition day this afternoon that's going to deal with two motions, that's it. Uh, there's three opposition parties and uh, many, many private members in this House, uh, Mr. Speaker, and how's that business going to get done? We're also operating under a state of emergency, Mr. Speaker, which makes it all the more important that we're sitting in this House uh, to ensure accountability of a, a government operating under a state of emerg emergency, which is a very unusual situation, yet this House has sat so few days that it hasn't had the ability to ensure 
that uh, government remains accountable while it's operating under a state of emergency. And why that is important, of course, is the state of emergency under the Emergency Measures Act gives overwhelming powers to the government through the Minister of Public Safety and Justice uh, to make sweeping decisions, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and so it's important that the checks and balances built into our system, which is within the Legislative Assembly, uh, be utilized and have the, the opportunity to be utilized if necessary uh, during a state of emergency. We can't do that when we're not sitting in the House, Mr. Speaker. So I, I cannot support this motion for adjournment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Fredericton